Welcome to the ninth lecture of optical sensors course. Uh, on the previous lecture, we discussed uh, evanescent waves and uh, we also saw how to use them for sensing applications. And uh, till now, we have been studying uh, materials which have only uh, real value of the dielectric constant. So, it is like transparent materials and uh, dielectrics. Now, we will see what happens with metals. So, today we will discuss uh, absorption and dispersion and from there we will end up with Drude model for conductors and if time permits we will discuss bulk plasmons. So, when the refractive index is complex basically it will have uh, a complex component also. So, till now we had epsilon s is equal to n square, now we have complex ones. So, since n is complex, epsilon will be complex. So, epsilon will be square of n r minus i k. So, you can choose the sign of this uh, and depending on the sign, the sign of k depends if it can become negative or positive. So, from here. So, if you make a square of it, so it becomes epsilon is equal to n r square plus k square or kappa square and minus 2 i n r into kappa. So, basically it is epsilon 1 or epsilon or epsilon real, we will be using one of it. So, this is uh, plus i k i square kappa square. So, i square is minus 1. So, epsilon r will be n r square minus kappa square and epsilon i will be that will be epsilon 2 will be 2 n kappa. Yeah. This is what we get. So, if a, there is a plane wave and it is incident on an interface of a dielectric and metal then it will be decaying as this and the intensity will decay like E square. So, it will be like this. So, we want to see how much light gets absorbed. So, we define absorption coefficient alpha that is given by this relation. So, it is a simple uh, experimental setup like you have an you have a medium which you do not know if it is a you know all you know is that it is absorbing what you do is that you shine light on it. So, intensity in incident intensity is i 0 what you get is i. So, i will be i 0 exponential of minus alpha d that is called Lambert Beer, Beer law this is Beer's law. So, from there you this alpha this depends on d here uh, this intensity so, if you have uh, larger d then the intensity will decrease rapidly more. Okay. So, if but this condition we arrive only when we have ignored the reflections at the boundaries. So, if any material has complex refractive index it will be absorbing in that particular wavelength range because all this uh, refractive index indexes are uh, wavelength dependent that we will see. So, we know evanescent wave sensors, you, you know that you have certain configuration, it, it has evanescent wave and you put a material here which is kind of absorbing. So, basically you can use it for evanescent wave absorption sensors. So, for example, here we have I have shown you evanescent wave absorption sensors using silver halide IR fibers. So, in particular we are studying glucose sensing and you see that uh, uh, from this reference you can see that the absor absorbance as a function of wave number for different sample solutions. So, here we have coca cola light, coca cola and then fructose, glucose and saccharose. And you see that in Coca-Cola, the absorbance is high. 
So, if we translate this absorbance value with respect to glucose concentration, you can say that the concentration of glucose in coca cola is higher, while in light coca cola it is relatively much smaller. Let us say an exam, uh, see another example where they were doing orange juice analysis and it was shown that if you have fresh orange juice, the absorbance is maximum here and if nectar has something, then it starts decreasing. So, based on the absorbance, you can say that if the juice is fresh or not. Similarly, uh, people have uh, monitored the spectrum of the skin at different times of the day and they have found that because of change in the glucose concentration, the transmission or reflection changes. Whatever you measure, you measure either absorption or reflection or transmission, here it, they have measured the transmission as a function of wave number and you can see that it starts decreasing with evening. Here is another example where they detected ethanol in water using fiber optic evanescent wave sensor and what they saw is that with an increase in, so for different water concentrations they recorded the absorption spectra took the logarithms I told you that this is Beer's law and from there they calculated absorption coefficient and now they plot the absorption with respect to water concentration and it was found that with an increase in water, increase of water in ethanol, there is a decrease, uh, there is an increase in uh, absorbance. So, it is first increasing and then decreasing. So, there that we will explain later when we see a comparative study on surface plasmons, but for now we see that you have a peak somewhere and that a peak absorbance is changing with respect to change in water concentration in ethanol. So, if you have larger water concentration, if you get larger absorbance that means, ethanol is impure. Okay? So, you want to avoid that. So, we have now till now we have seen what is an evanescent wave, what is the role of absorption here for, for making evanescent wave absorption sensors and we discussed a few of sensors based on absorption, evanescent wave absorption technique. Now, let us see what is dispersion, it is also a very important para optical parameter which allows us to various sensing mechanisms. So, we need to study this also. So, when you sign a prism or any material with white light, what you get is that 7 colors it, it is splits into several colors right like here in this picture and why it happens that why it happens because all the wavelengths in this light in this polychromatic light have different speeds in the material medium. So, for example, if you have an incident light uh, which is monochromatic you will have only one ray coming, but if you have polychromatic light that means, white light what you see is that all the components will get dispersed and that is uh, and that is because of speed of different wavelengths at uh, is different for uh, in the particular material medium. So, for example, here you see that uh, uh, the red is less deviated and the violet is more deviated. And uh, another example is rainbows, where you see that when uh, it just rained and after that when there is sun, uh, sunrise, you see a rainbow like this. And why it appears? Because we have dispersion. So, the sunlight which falls on the water droplets, because now the weather is humid. So, there is lots of moisture in the atmosphere, you see that the violet and red components and all the components in between they get separated. So, if you have a droplet here sunlight is falling on it somewhere what you see is that it gets dispersed, but 
this is not exactly what you see, you see other way around, you see the uh, red one on the top and violet one on the bottom and that is because of this thing that because we do not perceive the violet light from the drops which are at top at higher altitudes and the, uh, the ones which are at the bottom the red ones we do not see. So, basically what we see is this that the red one is on the top and the wallet in the bottom. So, actually we see kind of inverted ones because of this altitude thing. Okay. So, we know what is dispersion now. Let us try to solve it analytically what and uh, find an expression for it and uh, to understand it analytically we consider a material medium as as a spring problem and what we see is that this uh, electrons are are attached to the lattice in a fashion that uh, that uh, it can have oscillations along the lattice and uh, an oscillating electron is actually bound so, you, if you can write the equation of motion for this electron which is oscillating along the uh, around this lattice, what you see is that you have a component of inertia and then a damping coefficient. Why damping? Because it is a kind of damp oscillator okay? and then this is the restoring force. So, the restoring force what constitutes the restoring force? You see that in equilibrium uh, so, uh, you have a positive core and then the electron. Now, somehow you disturb the equilibrium. So, suppose you push the electron close to the core, what will happen? Core will try it further uh, bring it closer while the electron, electro other electrons they will try to pull it to them because they want to create the equilibrium. So, these two forces all together are called restoring force. So, this is the force and this is the force which was applied and if you solve for the uh, similar to like Mosotti equation using this P is the polarization mu is the dipoles what you get is that this relation in dipole movement and P is proportional to exponential of i omega t and you know d is equal to epsilon e you put them together to get this relation where b is the oscillator strength. So, you know the oscillator strength and the resonance frequency actually here is shifted by frequency of the oscillating dipoles which is given by this relation omega c is given by this relation which is 4 pi n q e square upon 3 m e. m e is the mass of the electron and n q e is the charge of the electron. So, if you plot the dispersion curve basically the real part shows the kink here while the imaginary part shows this uh, is the, this uh, uh, pink curve for this particular uh, values of b omega naught and d. Okay. What happens to glasses? In glasses the refractive indices are real and follow one of the formula either they follow Cauchy or they follow Selmayr relations. So, n is a function of some constant and then lambda square lambda to power 4 something like this or again here like you can have it like lambda square by lambda square minus 1 and then there are these coefficients which are basically different for different materials. So, here is an example you see that the refractive index uh, varies with wavelength for different materials here and uh, at higher wavelengths it is almost constant, but uh, the variation is not that prominent and uh, you can choose the coefficients like I told you 
and these coefficients define the material. So, if you have say silica it will be different, if you have BK7 it will be different, if you have SF11 there is another glass then you can have different of um, coefficient for this. So, if you want to see uh, if you want to use any material and want to know what is the refractive index of that uh, you can go to this site which uh, has uh, a database of material refractive indices. So, you can download also the excel files and text files from there and you can use it for simulations. Now, let us see what happens to dip dispersion of free carriers. Free carriers means like uh, uh, free electrons in metals or ions in the ionosphere, where there is no restoring force, they are free, no damping, they are free. So, the equation we derived for oscillating dipole reduces to this, all the other terms vanish, and if you solve for p this is the second order dif differential equation in T, you get this relation and if you use this you arrive to this important relation, where omega p is the plasma frequency given by this relation in CGS and in the uh, SI. So, from the relation of bound electrons we had this, now this becomes equal to 0. So, you get this relation at for gamma is equal to 0. So, this is called Drew term which is the same function obtained without damping. So, if there is no damping you get this term. Okay. What is plasma frequency? I will come to that. Let us see what happens to the dispersion of mat various metals and we see here that for different metals say silver, gold and aluminum, why we are choosing only these materials because these are uh, they have a large amount of free electrons and uh, they are noble metals and what uh, important about is them is that they can be used for plasmonic sensing. So, we are basically concerned about plasmonic sensing. So, if you, you, ca you can put all these values there and you can see what are the dielectric functions. So, basically this is from SOPRA database, you can use it for this and we have we saw that the real part and imaginary part of acylon are like this for aluminum. So, so this is epsilon 1, so epsilon 1 is epsilon, epsilon 1 is epsilon m 1, m is for metal omega plus i epsilon m 2 omega. So, epsilon m is the real part and epsilon m 2 is the imaginary part. What you see here is that the real part is negative that is something very important you see real part is negative. While the imaginary part positive, positive imaginary part means it is absorbing, okay. real imaginary part I will come to that what it means when we discuss plasmons. So, today we discussed what are evanescent wave absorption sensors and the dispersion characteristics using Lorentz damped oscillator model were discussed and Drude model was achieved. So, till now what we see is that you consider a material as oscillators having oscillators which are electrons and uh, the ions there and these are damped oscillators you solve for the uh, equation of motion and then you arrive to the equation which describes the dielectric constant of this particular medium. If it is it has imaginary part it will be absorbing, if it does not have imaginary part only real part then it will be transmitting. 
So, omega phi is the frequency below which the material becomes absorbing and above it becomes radiative or transmittive. Thank you.